Hey folks, AJ the CEO here, and we got another request based off of the other video where we did a church video workflow talking about what you can and can't do with some of the equipment to get you a mind about how you could possibly even plan out something. We had somebody who had a consultation with me and they had a unique setup that I thought might be interesting for me to share with y'all. So let's go ahead and cut over to draw IO and let's talk about this unique situation. Alrighty folks, so what is the unique situation? And I know I said I was gonna cut over to the computer. Let's go back to the first. So let's explain the situation first. So with the ATEM Mini Extreme, you have two outputs. And we've talked about multiple ways on how you can restrict that output of the live stream does whatever is going to be over program but you can lock one of the hdmi outs to be just your presentation system so that's the only thing that can be seen inside the house but your live stream will see the entire mix that you are setting up and producing um, and then you also have the other output that's going to give you your multi-view so at max you have three outputs the usb output HDMI output number one, HDMI output number two, and most of the time one of those is going to be a multi-view. So you really got two outputs. But what if you wanted to have multiple outputs? How would you do that? Um, without getting very complicated, I mean you could always throw a whole bunch of stuff in this situation, but I want to recall and bring back something that we did at Good Shepherd Baptist Church, and that is using the Blackmagic Design Smart Video Hub. These devices come in at a 12 by 12, a 20 by 20, a 40 by 40, a 80 by 80, and yeah, <laughs> it's um, intelligent routing. So don't be confused. This will not act like an ATEM or ATEM Television Studio, a Production Studio ME. It won't do that but it is intelligent routing, meaning that you send every single input into this device and then you could connect every output and you can route any way that you imagine with this. So now that I've set this up, let's first give a diagram of what the Smart Video Hub is and how you can use it, and then we'll put it into um, a design based off of what my consultation was with a client. So let's cut back over to Draw.io. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and just explain how this Smart Video Hub will work um, in general first, and then we'll put it into an actual system. So we'll just get this one here, we'll do Smart Video hub and again the mindset is every input and every output goes into this device so say we got the camera here you know we got our cameras and then i don't know DVD player, if you want to have something like that, be mindful that you have to have certain type of stuff, conversions and things like that for that to work. Got a computer. Get your pewter. You know, hopefully you get the idea of how this will work. So all of these would be inputs. into the smart video hub. Maybe I should have put all of these into the same dot. At least to try and make it, uh, okay, that didn't work. All right, so after doing that, all of our inputs are going to go into this, all right? Now, with this also will now allow you to have that connect to all of your outputs. So that'll be your displays, your TVs, your projectors, your live stream. There's a reason why I'm saying that. You can have it here. And 
just different any type of output. Or, let me throw y'all in for this one, your ATEM. Maybe I should have waited for this one. <laughs> but the idea is now you're going to have this connect to your outputs. So we'll have the ATEM, and let's do this as a different color. That would be an output. Your computer, whether it's live streaming, that could be an output. Your televisions could be an output. And things like that, all right? I'm definitely going to put these here to make these in order. All right, so those are your ins and your outs. And this smart video hub can intelligently say, oh, camera number one, I want it to go to, and actually, I'm going to come back to this, but say camera number one, we want that to go to our um, entrance. TV. I don't know. And then you got security TV. And then sanctuary TV. And then live streaming PC. Something like that. So say you have a DVD and in say let's just talk about this as a funeral home or something like that say that you have a slideshow or something or even a wedding and you want that to be in the entrance you can have this say take input number five and route it to output number four which would be the entrance tv so that would be the so theoretically in action not theoretically actually it would be something like this it is routing this directly to this TV. You could say output this to a combination of TVs. It could be a one in one. It could be input number one goes to output number two. I mean, output number one. You can do that. You could say input number one goes to outputs one through four um, or anything like that. Now, the reason I say that is here, the ATEM has multiple inputs. So for here, and how I've done this is I've routed multiple outputs from our smart video hub into our ATEM. And it's like, AJ, why would you do that? Well, the first reason would be is we're sending every input to our smart video hub. All right. So that means if you have cameras, every single camera, PTZ camera, hits this, and then you can route this. And the beauty of this now is, hey, at one point in time, you can say your inputs are cameras one, two, three, and four, and now you can use the ATEM to control it and do your DSK and upstream key and all this other stuff like that. But you could also say at the press of a button, I don't want input number four to be the back PTZ. I want it to be the DVD player. And the smart video hub will just now say this input is now considered the output that is going into input number four on the ATEM, if you understand what I mean. And I, I think this will make sense once you see it. But the idea is you can have, you have a 12 by 12, you have 12 inputs, you have 12 outputs. That's the way it could work. Now, since we mentioned the ATEM, let's do this again. We want to now, these are inputs, but the ATEM has outputs, depending on which one that you have. And I'm going to talk about the ATEM Television Studio, because that's what a um, client that called me has. This output would come back into the ATEM, and let's drag it over here to get it up out of the way. So this is the program out. But we can do it again and now say, I want the aux out to also come in. What's the beauty of that? Now, since the smart video hub is ha handling everything, we will now say the program input that's coming into the video, the smart video hub is now routed 
to our live stream. All right. It's handling all of the routing. All right. So instead of connecting it directly here, you can route it here because say maybe you want to have two computers, but you only got one aux out. Instead of having a splitter, you can just say, hey, output the program to the sanctuary and the live stream or the security. And you can do a bunch of combinations of stuff. So hopefully that makes sense. This if I had this to do again, this is the reason why I could do this. I would want to do this because I can put this smart video hub in and just run every display in the building, SDI, convert it over to um, HDMI when it goes to a monitor or something like that, a television. And at the press of a button, I don't have to do anything. This would be the hub of everything. Every output, every input comes to this and now from a software program, you do the routing to go wherever. So say you have a big screen TV that's in a conference room, and then you also have a 32 inch screen that's inside of the media room. Hey, what if all of a sudden we're going to be doing a Zoom meeting that doesn't need to be done in the, in the sanctuary, but we still want somebody to be able to control it. You can now route because this is another output that you can do. You can route the multi-view output from the smart video hub to a different TV inside your compound this, or your building or wherever that's connected. It allows you a lot of flexibility to move your screen wherever you want to instead of having to run a new cable and a new screen. You just let the smart video hub redirect it. I really hope this makes sense. So let's see if I can go back through the design um, of what I had with a consultation with a client. And this might be really rough for me to remember off the top of my head. So again, Pat, my apologies if it's not exactly how your design was. All right. So right now they have an A10 Television Studio HD. And I'm just going to use every single input to make this simple, all right? And this is going to be very detailed. So we have, let me use a camera. And I'm going to use these smaller cameras to make it, make it easier. All right, so the ATEM Television Studio HD has four SDI inputs, and it has for HDMI inputs, all right? And let's say, let's do two computers. Because now I'm starting to remember exactly um, what he was trying to do. All right, so say we're gonna connect these cameras over SDI. We use that as a black line. This is the design, and I guess I should have skipped this and just gone directly to the Smart Video Hub. I'm giving myself extra work to do in doing this, but hopefully y'all get something out of this. And then we have our presentation computer, say it's ProPresenter. We have our audience display, but then we also have another output that is going to be our stage display. All right, and say just for the giggles, we're going to add another here. And I would say this is going to be just for announcements because you can't do that in ProPresenter 7 and 6. Um, and then something like that. So we have, and then what else are we going to have? Obviously, we're going to have a monitor for our multi-view. 
and then I'm just going to give you all of our outputs here. So we also have our program, and then we also have our aux out. So boom, HDMI out. Program out is only SDI on the Television Studio HD, so that would need to be converted. And the aux out is also SDI out. All right, so that's how the flow would be. So what is he trying to do inside of this? And this is how um, it's very unique what needs to be done, especially the Smart Video Hub gives you a lot of flexibility on how this can be done. So I'm going to say this is Sanctuary, right? Sanctuary left. Sanctuary back. Entrance. Overflow. And there's another display. Um, he calls it social. It's kind of like almost like a, a direct feed of what the program would see from the live stream. Remember that the live stream as in the final result of live stream um, with the graphics and everything that's not done in the ATEM. All right. So what we want is for these TVs and maybe I should color code these. We want these to actually be that color is not good. These TVs are going to be, why did it change my, got rid of my text. Hmm. Oh, it changed it to white. Okay. Um, all right. So what we want is the blue is always going to have the full screen version of whatever the audience is going to see. All right, not a lower third. And that's actually, that's what that should be, not announcements. Lower thirds. So this would always be the full screen from ProPresenter, but there could always be the option to switch it back to seeing cameras, right? Now, you always could just run two lines one line directly from the computer, then another one from an ATEM, and that could work. Then somebody has to press the remote to change the input. That could work. I've done that before. Um, but then the back screen, we're going to give that a different color. Actually, I'm not going to do that because it changed my text. This one wants to have the stage display, but at, at a press of a button, it could show what's in the sanctuary so everybody can see what's going on. Or maybe you're having a Zoom um, call and you want to turn the back screen to be able to see all the participants you need more flexibility so now that's another three inputs going to that <laughs> to that tv and with another person with a remote control changing it the entrance wants to just show announcements until there's a certain part in the service another joystick another line in to change that then overflow is like your fellowship hall where it's just not enough room inside the main sanctuary and people want to be able to watch that. That's going to be kind of like the non-graphics version of your live stream. So it's like somebody's in what they would see in the sanctuary, but they're in a different part of the building. Now, the social is the finished result of exactly what's going to YouTube, Facebook, whatever. So this isn't just the ATEM, it's the ATEM going through um, vMix or OBS. I think it's OBS that they're using that would do that, all right? So hopefully that makes sense. So how would we do that? Oh, and I also did not include the audio mixer. 
which is going to be, let's make this small because that's going to get up out of the way. That's just going to be connected directly to the ATEM like we normally do over XLR and boom, we're good to go. So how would we, how would the smart video hub handle all of this stuff? So smart video hub. And I should have changed these out. <laughs> I think I will do that. Let's do, let's call this the ATEM, Television Studio HD. All right, and then we're going to name this the Smart Video Hub. I personally would go with a 20 by 20, but again, it all depends on the budget. So, so 20 inputs, 20 outputs, all right? So what are we doing with this? Instead of this connecting here, going to connect this to the ATEM. The audio is still going to be exactly the same here. Um, what needs to happen because the smart video hub only has SDI connections, what we'll need to do is convert everything to SDI. So we will add at least three HDMI to SDI converters for all of our HDMI inputs. So in this scenario, it's mainly for um, all of our inputs coming from our presentation system. All right, let's do that again and let's redesign this here. So now we have our audience output, which is HDMI. And we have Lower thirds, then we have our stage display. All right, so this is, I guess I should change these into a different color so it makes it easy for you to understand which one is which. And then this is um, stage. And let's do that. Let's change these to different colors. orange, do that red, and then we'll leave that blue. All right. Now, all of these are going to come into now as SDI into our smart video hub. And now I need to remember which color is which <laughs> when I'm doing this. All right, we got all our cameras, everything going into the system now, right? So what we're going to do now is from the ATEM, we're also going to have our program out coming in. Program. We're also going to have our auxiliary going in, and we're going to have our multi view going in. So that's three inputs. So let's count them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 inputs, so we may be able to get away with the 12. And I'm gonna have another computer here, which is um, our OBS system. And what we want to do, and I'm running out of space. Let's move the mixer over here. We're gonna have our dual screen external output go into this so we need another we need another converter i mean you could get a decklink mini mini 
monitor and then you can just have it out through OBS or vMix to do this and you don't have to worry about this. But I'm just gonna treat it as if you're not getting one. Because honestly, the converter is cheaper than getting the card. So this is gonna be um, live stream out. And I guess I should change that color too. Let's make that purple. All right. This is the flow of what? Ah, am I red? Doesn't work here. All right. So here's our flow of what we want to do. All right. Um, let's change this color back because that has to be black as well, too. So, how are we going to route this stuff and how is the smart video hub going to make this easier? So what we're going to do is pick our one, two, three, four, five, six, well, actually just five, um, our four cameras. Now I'm going to say the audience. So we want our four cameras to come through. They will be routed into our ATEM. All right. So running out of space here, we're going to route these in. So just realize this is going to be eight. Eight outputs. So from we're always going to have eight routed, but then we can pick whatever those eight lanes are going to be using. So right now it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're using six right now. All right. Those lines are going to be ran into our ATEM. So our ATEM television studio is going to be able to control just like it normally would. Cameras one, two, three, and four, the audience view and the lower third. So audience view meaning that I want to do full screen that's going to be sent to the live stream as well as lower thirds for DSK. That gives the ATEM full control like it normally would. All right, so that's what's going to be routed into the ATEM television studio. The multi view is going to be routed. And maybe I should have put these colors on here as well, too. Our multi view output, and y'all can't even tell what color that is. Maybe I'm going I'm to do it in a pattern. Hopefully that will help with this one. So the multi-view out, I'm going to do this line dash. That's what that's going to. That's going to be routed to this monitor. And that's all being done through the Smart Video Hub. That can change to anything that you want it to. All right. Our program. What are we going to do with that? Let's do this line. Our program output. What are we going to do for that? And honestly, I forgot to do another line out for this. Running out of space. Well, this actually works because it actually has the line color that I need. So this, the program out of everything that's made in our ATEM is going to go into our streaming PC. All right. That's what goes out. All right. So everything that we make in production, that's what's going out into OBS, all right? Now, remember, this is the same thing that social was done. Maybe I should have made this square bigger so I had more room. Yeah, I think that works. All right, so again, this is program. That's what's going to our live stream into OBS, right? Now, the live stream out, which just happens to be now with all the graphics and everything that OBS makes, 
is also an input. That, which is in purple, is going to be routed to our social monitor. I think I grabbed the wrong line. So from here, the, with the graphics and everything, is going to the Smart Video Hub as the input and as the output, it is now going, is routed to the television in the social wing for them to monitor, live stream, everything that's on there. That's how that works, all right? Cool. Now, we also have this other input, say the audience. That will be routed out. Actually, let me not do that. I'll say this, this is our um, program. Our program is now going into our overflow. So that's the same thing, cameras and everything in full screen, but not the extra graphics that are only meant for our live stream. That is now going to our overflow. Our entrance is going to have nothing but the full screen output of our audience that's coming from ProPresenter. That's what's going to that one. So that would be playing announcements or anything like that that's going on there. And you can always add a, um, a player like the Raspberry Pi or something like that in here and it can be routed the same way. Um, now for the back sanctuary, we're just gonna have that routed to be the stage display. So the same output that's coming from ProPresenter as stage into the Smart Video Hub is routed to our backstage display. And then similar to the entrance, our two sanctuary displays will also only show nothing but what is coming from our um, audience view. Audience output, excuse me, from ProPresenter, all right? Now that gives you all of this. <laughs> and then we routed, um, the aux, if we had anything extra, it could be go there. You know, it could do the same thing. It doesn't really matter. Because at this point, the aux kind of is, is kind of negated because the smart video hub is acting as the same thing. So you don't necessarily need aux, but I'm going to keep it there. So that's what this program would be. So we're just going to erase that. And the program now is going to our live streaming system as well as our overflow. But the full mix that's coming from OBS or vMix is also being routed back to social. And I mean, if you want to add some more complexity in here, which I want to do, because why not make it even more difficult? <laughs> Let's add a laptop in here and say that this is for Zoom. So now I could send Zoom well, I, again, I forgot my adapter here. We could send our Zoom laptop into this and then into the Smart Video Hub. And I need a different color so we know what that is. This is dirty brown, would that work? All right, so we'll say the Zoom is here. And now we can say at any press of a button, we can say, hey, instead, our back display, I want you to now show the overflow from, um, from Zoom. That's what's gonna show up on the screen. You know, and it gives you a lot of flexibility. Now, that's really complicated. If you had to wire that, that would be a nightmare and designing it on picture for you to see that 
is a nightmare. But again, literally the interface in the Smart Video Hub is just a list of inputs, a list of outputs. You pick what output you want to have an input and that's it. And you can just change it. It's like a drop down list. You just pick which one that you want. So hopefully <laughs> that makes sense. And um, again, I did this because a, a, a subscriber wanted me to do this. I don't know if you'll get a lot out of this, but again, this is a similar type of setup that I did at Good Shepherd. I haven't had a chance to work with one of these smart video hubs because a lot have not wanted to add a lot of complexity into their live streaming as well, not just the live streaming, but their video production um, and distribution inside of their building. But the smart video hub makes everything so easy. You just have to run, if it has, if there is a camera or a video um, input device, camera, computer, whatever, run it into the smart video hub. If you have a projector, a TV, a computer that's gonna be capturing video, connect it to the output of the smart video hub and then the smart video hub can tell it whichever way it wants to go. Now, I mean, honestly, I would almost wanna use something here in my apartment for that, but again, I don't have that many <laughs> monitors, but you never know. Um, I would almost, almost entertain getting one just to set it up, but I mean, it would be overkill. Maybe when I get my house, maybe something like that would be cool because then I can route it for the TV in the den to be the multi-view so I can see and I can live stream from there and route it from the studio to different parts of the the house and stuff like that. That could be a reason to do it, but again, not right now. But um, let me know if you have any other questions or if you want me to try and design out something like this for y'all. Um, I love doing stuff like this and hopefully I'm making it simple. Um, and I didn't mention it, but all of the audio is being captured from the mixer in this type of design here. Um, so that's why I'm, if there was any audio, y'all know how I do, anything that's gonna be audio would go into the mixer. So in this setup, audio is being captured and sent with video, with programs. So when audio is coming through that way, it's gonna to go to the equivalent um, places the exact same way. If you were playing video, if you had like this and it was playing a YouTube video and that was from the audience, this audio would still be routed into the system and you could, I would do it through the mixer and it'll go out. If you wanted audio to go that way, you would want to send audio and video over the input and then it would go there. But, you know, we, we played around that. It does work. But like I said, um, if you want to see more detail of this, I can see if I can catch up with some folks over at Good Shepherd because that's why I set it up and may, maybe just do a revisit to walk you through physically how it would work and see like that. But anyway, link is down below to the Smart Video Hub. Great little device um, and just realize that it only has SDI in. So any input that's non-SDI obviously needs to be converted. So. If you like this type of content, appreciate a like, consider subscribing, hit that bell. That way you get notified when we come out with other videos to help modernize your media ministry. Thanks for watching, folks. This is AJ, and we will catch you on the next video. Later.